Honey or bitter water, which do you choose? Bai Xiafeng. Culture is the lifeblood of a nation's social operations. If the blood is virus infected, the society cannot function healthily, nor can individuals attain a happy life. Let's dissect some cells within culture to see if they carry viruses. Plum blossoms bloom most vibrantly amidst the bitter cold. One cannot appreciate the fragrance of plum blossoms without experiencing the chill to the bone. Pressure is the driving force of progress. Setbacks propel people forward. Don't guide the children, let them face setbacks and take a few falls to become strong. Heaven imposes great tasks on people by first subjecting them to hardship, weariness, and starvation. Are these viewpoints correct? Let's analyze them from the perspective of human nature and reality. Let's consider praise, encouragement, admiration, sweet nothings, smooth sailing, wishes coming true, auspiciousness, and health as honey. And let's liken bitterness, pressure, poverty, setbacks, hunger, attacks, sarcasm, ridicule, humiliation, and disabilities to bitter water. Speaking of human nature, people will undoubtedly choose honey over bitter water. If someone opts for bitter water over honey, there must be a glitch in their psyche. In terms of reality, have you noticed that almost all fruits, if bumped or bruised, are most likely to spoil at those spots? Fruits that remain unbruised tend to last longer and are less prone to spoilage. Bruising is akin to the fruit experiencing setbacks and attacks, proving that setbacks and attacks are not beneficial. If this is the case with fruits, what about humans? How do humans fare when faced with external attacks and oppression? It is said that an experiment was conducted with two similarly sized and developed plants placed separately. One plant received comments like, you're so beautiful. How lovely you are. I love you. I like you so much. The other was treated with remarks like, you're so ugly. Why do you look so disgusting? You're about to die. Over time, the plant that was consistently praised and encouraged grew more lush and vigorous, while the one that was constantly criticized, cursed, and condemned gradually withered and lost vitality. If plants react this way, how about humans? Are those who are frequently praised and encouraged likely to be healthier and have a more beautiful spirit? Or are those who are often insulted and slandered likely to be healthier and mentally stable? We've all been to elementary school. Have you noticed some desks full of scars? They were damaged because someone banged on them one day, carved them with a knife the next, and pushed them over on another. Over time, the desk becomes battered and wobbly, with a pitted surface. If a person is frequently banged, carved, and shaken, Will they become more perfect, or will they be scarred? Psychology speaks of the Pygmalion effect, which suggests people develop in the direction shaped by public perception. If everyone says, you are full of love, the person will be full of love. If everyone says, you are full of hate, the person will be full of hate. If everyone says, you are a great person, the chances of this person becoming great increase. If everyone says, you're a bad woman, this woman will undoubtedly develop in that direction. Fruits, plants, desks, and the Pygmalion effect tell us that praise and encouragement are more beneficial for a person's healthy growth and societal contribution than degradation and demoralization. My personal growth also proves that honey is better than bitter water. I grew up basking in the adoration of those around me. As a child, adults said, this kid is clever. In elementary school, teachers praised me as a phoenix in the sky. At 18, I was appointed as the team secretary. Throughout high school, technical school, college, and university, I was almost always elected as the class monitor by my classmates. As a middle school teacher, students adored me as King Geezer. Especially during the 10 plus years as the guide of life at Chanyuan, I was daily praised by Chanyuan Celestials. My life has always been steeped in honey. Tell me, have I turned bad? In fact, aside from the natural laws, a factor that cannot be overlooked in my founding of life at Chanyuan and the second home is the affection I received from people. 
I deeply felt the approachability, lovability, and respectability of humans, and the beauty of life. Thus, making people's lives more beautiful became my heartfelt mission. My child's growth and current situation also serve as proof. I primarily offered him praise and encouragement, seldom applying pressure or belittlement. What was the outcome? He grew up mentally sound, capable, and adept at managing interpersonal relationships. Wherever he goes, he finds mentors and friends to look after him. Just yesterday, he called to tell me they were planning to travel to England and Italy and live in Thailand for a while. I asked if there were any difficulties, and he reassured me, Dad, don't worry. Friends invited us, and we have friends looking after us everywhere. Not long ago, I even poured him some intoxicating soup, saying, Son, you're truly remarkable. I've also faced setbacks, been deceived, and attacked, which is to say, I've tasted bitter water. But these bitter experiences have left indelible scars in my heart, forever marking the ugly aspects of society and humanity. Whenever I recall the bitter water I've tasted, my heart doesn't fill with love and compassion but with hatred and cruelty. Thus, I've discovered, heaven will descend a demon upon this person, surely first tormenting their will and exhausting their muscles and skin. One fact that cannot be overlooked is that there is no bitter water in heaven, yet those who live in heaven enjoy the beauty of life to the fullest. Hell, on the other hand, is filled with insults, oppression, deceit, cruelty, setbacks, and suppression, yet no ghost has ever transformed into an immortal or Buddha. Do plum blossoms really owe their fragrance to the bitter cold? Who can prove that the scent of plum blossoms doesn't come from their genetic structure but from the harsh cold? Must plum blossoms endure hardship to produce their fragrance? The thousand-year world also has plum blossoms, which have never suffered the torment of severe cold, so why do they still smell just as sweet? Therefore, my view is to praise more, criticize less, encourage more, and attack less. Let people's lives have fewer pressures and setbacks and more smooth sailing and bright spring sunshine. Even if we step back, life is just a few short decades. Many people bid farewell to the world in their teens, twenties, or thirties. With such a fleeting moment of life, why subject people to tormenting their will, starving their bodies, and exhausting their muscles and bones? Even if one grows into an emperor, a wealthy person, or a star through bitter experiences, isn't it just an illusory shadow of life? So, let people bask in the sweetness of honey throughout their lives. Let's speak more sweet nothings to each other. Who among you has ever smelled a foul odor in a flower room? Who has ever sensed a floral fragrance in a latrine? Who among you has seen a person with a beautiful soul insult, deceive, attack, trap, or harm others? Who among you has seen a person with an ugly soul praise, inspire, or treat others with sweet words? So, between honey and bitter water, which do you choose? November 16th, 2022 ChatGPT can make mistakes. Consider checking important information.